Today we're going to be taking a look at another FNAF related video. This one is titled Non-Existent Video. Um, I believe it's an analog horror. I looked over it really, really briefly and it has a lot of analog horror aspects to it. Um, apart from that, this is a cold reaction, so to say. I have no idea what I'm getting into, so without further ado, or with all that being said, <laughs> I never know which one I say first. Um, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video, shall we? Fredbear's Family Diamond. Fredbear employee. Hello. Welcome to the mascot costume assembly My training My name is Patrick. Table. Nice to meet you. There are two types of suits. Okay. Fredbear and Bonnie Bond. Isn't there a Chica one? These suits double as both animatronic no Chica, suits okay. and wearable costumes for performers. All right. It's efficient and eliminates any differences in appearance as to not break the immersion. Cost efficient. All right. The wearable costumes will only be used when an animatronic is in repair. Got a little bit of something vivid going on here. It looks like the person is... The person wearing the suit's panicking a little bit. And then he's looking at us. Can you not... Can, can you not look at us, please? Thank you very much. Um, okay. I'm assuming that's purple guy. I got a little bit of knowledge of FNAF. He's singing in auto tune. This guy's going through all the problems. He looks like he's singing. It. Looks like he's having a rough time on the floor and shit. Did he just come out of the bathroom? wrong with them okay the suit is made up of three layers the first layer is a fabric costume that we normally see is he missing his legs the i don't know second layer is a fiberglass shell that forms the structure of the character okay the third layer is an exoskeleton this layer is the closest to your body when being worn okay so it you will were... help support all the weight <laughs> of the heavy components <laughs> and is responsible excuse me holding all the spring locks. So you wear this. This is the spring lock suit I'm assuming. Okay, yeah, this is the, the spring lock suit to attach to the animatronic. However, these springs can be very dangerous if the suit is not prepped carefully. Okay. Now, let's begin the training. So you wear this, right? To prep the costume into suit mode, we shall start by winding up all the spring locks with a hand crank. Insert the hand crank into the lock sockets located behind the animatronic. There are 10 lock sockets in total. Two on each limb, one on the back of the body, and one behind the head. This suit is extremely sus. If you were to ask me, I would say Next, this is a suit that's supposed to fail and kill people. But that's just me. To remove the Press head the before pose. taking off the costume. <laughs> Simply remove the head as well as the fiberglass structure underneath. He looks then, funny. <laughs> peel off the fabric costume. Once removed, you need to detach the fiberglass shell from the exoskeleton. Okay. Lastly, remove the exoskeleton from the animatronic. To put on the Oh, so you wear this. Okay. You know, you got me f***ed up. You got me completely f***ed up in so many ways. I would never. I would absolutely never. The paycheck has to be enormous for me to be wearing something like this. This, to me, this whole situation is sus. This whole spring trap suit, it, 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 it's, it's made to kill people. Okay, if I'm correct on my assumption. This is bound to fail and kill many employees. I would never wear something like this. I would never put like this on. Never in my life. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? It's the spring locks too much. Next, you'll need to reattach the fiberglass shell back on. You would never then, catch me in something like this ever layer. in my life. Once applied properly, put on the gloves and feet. Lastly, you'll need to put on the head. But before you do, you'll need to put the head do you guys hold on into performer mode. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? Let me go back put a little on bit. The gloves and feet. Lastly, 
Yo. Are y'all seeing that down there? That little that little face thingy that's looking at us under the, the little table over here. You guys seeing that? Let me zoom in so you guys can see that. Y'all are seeing that, right? A little Easter egg or something that you might miss when watching a video like this. Anyways. You'll need to put on the head. But before creepy. you do, you'll need to put the head into performer mode by winding up a small socket on the inside of the head to reveal the fake eyes. Perfect foot in the event Perfect of a screen failure, do not panic. Keep as still as possible and call for help. Calm your breathing and have a partner wound up the hand crank to lock the spring locks once more. This, again, I would never wear something like this. The fact that this is something that you gotta do and then undo manually this it sounds even more sus basically what this is telling you here is not in the event of a failure when it fails it's telling you to like don't make a sound and just sit back and relax and act like there's not 52 needles that just pierce through your whole body breaking all of your bones and ribs and stuff like that and you're bleeding internally and externally they're telling you you got to keep quiet and act like nothing happened and wait for somebody you got to wait for somebody while you're in all this pain and you gotta calm down and wait for somebody to come and undo this manually. I, have you lost your mind? Then safely and gently remove the suit. Fredbear jaw upgrade. Fredbear's costume was designed with a large jaw to hold all the teeth for a full smile. Unfortunately, that means modifications were needed for the animatronic to function properly. The Fredbear animatronic had problems with moving the straw with all the additional weight. Both animatronics were designed... <laughs> like the Fredbear animatronic had problems with moving its jaw with all the additional thickness. <laughs> okay. Both animatronics were designed with the intentions of having similar features, with the Bonnie bun being the main focus for design. To compensate for Fredbear's large jaw, We've installed two additional hydraulics on both sides of the animatronic's jaw. Fredbear is fully calibrated and ready to perform again. Sure. This is... I believe that to be the bite of 87 kick, but I'm not sure. I can't think of any other boy that would... Yeah, it's, it's most likely the bite of 87 kid. Hello, Freddy. I see that you got your mouth open and all that. Is that blood that I'm seeing on your mouth? Okay. <laughs> I bit someone. Yep, so the kid we saw before is the bite of 87. Okay. Hey, the f What's going on here? The four tapes in it inside there. Empty. Okay. Like I said before, this has a little bit of uh, analog horror aspects in it. <laughs> Body dots in the dark cheeks. Why does her face look like that? <laughs> Yo. Foxy meets the happy. He looks like a pedophile. <laughs> you are gifted. You felt <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright then. Why did Chica look like that? Did you guys see that? <laughs> did you guys see Foxy's face? Let me go back. Yo. Body dots get the dart. Yo, look at, look at her face. Why does she look busted? <laughs> Foxy meets the... That whole entire scene with Foxy and Chica definitely didn't look right. <laughs> uh, before your brother died, something else happened. Something was wrong with the suits. Watch. What is it that I'm watching? Ooh! Spring lock failure, right? Yeah, exactly. 
at somebody going crazy in the hallway. Uh, let me tell you a secret. The same thing happened to your father. He died in the spring lock suit. It killed him. Of course it did. But only for a while. What do you mean only for a while? How do you die? He's still out there. How do you die for a while and then come back? How does that make any sense? Do you want to find him? It's the whole marionette doll thing. I forgot the name of that. Uh, Fazbear's Frights. Okay. Don't worry about times, dates, or locations. You'll know when it happens. You'll know what, what happens. I'm left in the dark here a little bit. Uh, there will be a gasoline canister in the back next to the second exit. Your father will be there in the building with you. Okay, so I think this is a... Um... A follow-up or a reminder of FNAF 4, the one where the spring lock guy is in. So that's FNAF 4, where he burns the whole entire building down. FNAF 4 or FNAF 3, I'm not sure. Got a creepy marionette in the back. You'll be free too. It may not seem like it, uh, but I believe your brother will forgive you. I've forgiven you too, sure. Okay. You are good, Michael. You do deserve this happy ending. Okay. I've been working all this time to give you that opportunity. Who is speaking to me here? I'm not sure who's speaking. Is this the marionette? I love you, Michael. Okay, sure. Good stuff. Nice um, uh, family bonding we got here. Well, folks, it's been a real pleasure having you here tonight. You know, if we're going to be honest, I'm not sure what parent... This this has to be something like way back in like the 90s, 60s, or 70s type of shit, But I'm not sure what parent <laughs> would want to bring their child to see all of this. I mean, look at their faces. Guys, look. Look. This is nightmare inducing. I, I'm having a really hard time understanding what parent in their right mind would want to bring a child to something like this. Goodbye. They don't look fun. It doesn't look like they're going to give you a good time. And just remember that a friend is the best thing you could ever have. When Bob gets you down, a friend will be there. They don't look friendly. I don't... Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. They don't look lit. They look like people who would be cancelled. And now he's laughing. Y'all hear that? Nah, bro, nah. It's not for me. I would never. And that's the end of the video. So, I... I need to understand what I just watched. Because I don't fully... I'm not getting the picture. So, I believe there's a video explaining what went down here. So, I'm going to find that video and I'll get back to you guys in a second. And we're, we're, we're going to follow that video up with, with that video when I find it. I'll, um, I'll, I'll see you guys there. Okay, so I found the video and the video, of course, is titled Non-Existent Video of FNAF, Horrifying Meaning Explain. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the video right out, like immediately. We're not gonna waste any time, yeah? The tape starts as a usual training video about mascot assembly, or in other words, how to assemble the animatronics. Yes. The training video explains that there are two types of animatronics, the Fredbear. I'm not sure why there the isn't a third one. Depending how, it's an I... earlier version of the animatronic. Where's Chica? The training video then continues that the mascots work both as animatronics, functioning by robots, and also as wearable costumes letting them to function by humans inside them. I'm not sure why that was a ever a thing. efficient way to keep the show going. Cost efficient, you see, just because they, just because the company wasn't trying to spend any money, they went out and go, get, they went out and killed a lot of people, a lot of employees, just because they wanted to save money. You see, they don't care about the employees, bro. They just care about the bank. Going in case the endoskeletons fail. 
This leads to the perspective of an employee who wore the bunny bun costume, audibly nervous. So he was having a panic attack. Completely uncomfortable while performing on stage. And then he's the looking at us. Can you reportedly stop? Reportedly repaired. Move, bro. The employee then catches a glimpse of a man standing behind the stage Purple guy? observing him while having a large smile, being well dressed in a seemingly dark purple suit, with the screen then quickly flashing out with the purple light, Purple guy, indicating that he was no other than the psychopathic killer William Afton, also known as the purple guy, okay. the orchestrator of chaos and death. What's the matter, Foxy? I thought you wanted an audience. The clip then changes to a crawling animatronic, clearly malfunctioning, turning off and on, with a member of staff or even a child hiding from it. The animatronic, being in its fiberglass layer, observes sketches from children on the wall, and then sings an auto tune. Something, then continues on to sing an auto tune. That's what he <laughs> he's been singing an auto tune. He's been having a really, really rough time. Look at him, guys. He's going through all of it. You gotta feel for the guy or the child, whoever is in this animatronic. Chasing after the person hiding behind the wall. In a terrifying way, the face of the animatronic opens like Funtime Freddy, implying that it took this person's life. Yeah, I, I understand he's been going through a lot, but um, uh, it doesn't mean he had to act violent and do all of that. You know, that's just being extra. Okay. Meanwhile, there's apparently an alarm being sounded off for immediate evacuation for fire engulfing the place. Oh, a fire. I didn't even catch on to that in the other video. In the in this video. Singing an auto tune. Close to sleep for like two seconds. The training footage is then back to normal. Then he gets hostile. Elaborating on how each mascot is formed. The first layer is the soft Oof. fabric costume, which seems to behave more like a cloth than a solid shape, explaining why the employees couldn't just wear them. The second layer is a fiberglass shell, which acts as the structure of each mascot, giving them their specific shape. The third layer is then explained to be an exoskeleton, where the mechanical endoskeleton seemingly sits within. The training footage then proceeds to explain when an employee wears the mascot costume, they in fact have to be inside the exoskeleton. I would never. Endos. Again, I would never. I would never wear some stupid shit like this. I don't know who would. It's it, it, it's set up to kill you. I don't think people caught on to that though. Not until later on. But I caught on to it right away. I saw right through it. The company only cares about the bag, not the employees. Okay, they're out here trying to kill people because they want it to be cost efficient. Whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> oh, don't, I would never. I would personally never. Okay? The check has to be enormous. The bi-weekly check has to be huge. Even so, I have back problems and stuff like that, so to be up in this, I'm pretty sure it's like three to five times hotter in the suit than it would be outside of the suit. So not only will my back start acting up, but also I'll be sweating up in there and shit like, nah, it's just not, nah fam, nah. Who's acting like the mechanical part. The footage explains how the EXO supports all the weight using spring locks, supports making it all easy the for thickness. the wearer to move. There are some implications to this plan, however, as the spring locks can occasionally push the springs inwards in order to hold on tightly to the endoskeleton, which could potentially cause the wearer suffer an agonizing injury. As you see all of those balls, you see the motion it was going in and out. Imagine that going like full force through through like your skin and through your bones and everything and just staying there like not moving <laughs> and then you gotta wait for somebody first you gotta be on the ground and you you can't scream you can't move like vigorously around or else the spring locks are just gonna go like deeper into your body and then it's like it's gonna be difficult to get it out so you just gotta sit there and relax don't make a sound <laughs> you gotta wait for somebody hopefully like you know just pray you're not stuck in like the bathroom or something like that or like in the back room where nobody's gonna like visit until like their shift is over or something like that to put away their work uniform or whatever it may be so you gotta wait there <laughs> don't do this 
Don't, don't, just don't do this. Which could even be fatal, but only if not calibrated correctly. So there's nothing to worry about. There's everything to or worry about. <laughs> the video then goes on to explain how to prepare the suit into costume mode so it won't injure the wearer. The spring locks need to be wound up by a hand crank from Manually. the lock sockets, and the wearer needs to trust his or her fate that nothing goes wrong, which explains why the employee wearing the bunny bun costume was so nervous on the stage. Because there's no guarantee. If there's no guarantee, don't do it. Details instruction specifically mentions that there are spring locks even in the head, which would be fatal if activated while wearer is inside. The video the even explains the skull, that there's huh? nothing to panic about in case of there's spring everything lock failure, to panic about. indicating that there must have been accidents. Before. Many accidents, yes. The spring locks too much. Next, you'll need to reattach the fiberglass shell back on. Then, put on the fabric layer. Once applied properly, this is way too much. put on the gloves and feet. Lastly, you'll need to put on the head. You guys see the little thingy down there? You'll need to put the head that little into thing watching us under the table? By winding up a small socket on the inside of the head to reveal the fake eye. Perfect. Creepy. It's not perfect for children. In the event of a spring lock failure, do not panic. Keep you see what I'm talking about? Don't help. panic. Don't Keep move. Breathing, and have don't yell. Wound up the hand crank to lock don't the even panic, even though you're going to die. And safely and gently remove the suit. An informational text then quickly flashes in, entailing how Fredbear's jaw was recently upgraded to compensate for its large mouth compared to bunny buns. Two strong new hydraulics were installed to allow better movement of the jaw. An example clip then shows how Fredbear did in fact improve in mimicking mouth movement while talking. His creating face was a too thick, they needed children. something to hold it up. This soon backfires, however, as Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, alongside some of his friends, being killed and stupid, pull a prank on his little brother, known as the crying child, putting his head inside Fredbear's mouth. Guys, I fail to understand how something like this could be seen as a prank, but then again, these are stupid little punk ass children, so I wouldn't expect any less from them. See guys, a prank is something completely small and just for gags, with some embarrassment here or there. When we have a situation like this, there's a high probability of somebody getting seriously injured or even worse dead. And when we have something with the probability of that, it no longer becomes a prank. It becomes something completely stupid. I hope I've done a good job explaining what a prank is and what a prank isn't. Stupid little punk ass. As crying child was terrified of animatronics. Laughing and thinking it's just a joke. Bullying the little crying it's just child. A joke, right? The newly upgraded jaw of Fredbear senses something heavy in its mouth. Mm -hmm. And Look. to compensate the heavy load, it clasps its mouth shut. Using the two new hydraulics, causing the poor crying child to die in an agonizing way. Suffering from severe head trauma. Severe head trauma, broken neck, um... Bitten the f up brain, his brain's probably like crushed and like squished and all that. The crying child got bit the f up. Michael Afton, traumatized by the scene and guilty of what he did, shuts down mentally, choosing to It was to supposed to be a prank, right? Can you see now? Now you look mistake. foolish. A horrifying, irreversible mistake that took his little brother's life away. And that's how the tragic death of Crying Child became known to public as the Bite of 83. Was it the Bite of 83 or the Bite of 87? I forget. You just said the Bite of 83, so I guess it's the Bite of 83. The video then changes to the perspective of Michael Afton being a night guard in the pizzeria 
being older now, where the new animatronics attack him at random times, trying to kill him, which he at first dismisses as a general malfunction, not yet fully knowing about the horrendous crimes and cruelty having yet happened there. Michael manages to find the fifth tape, which was apparently non-existent, so that it could only be found by him as it was intended for him, explaining to Michael that horrendous things have been happening in the pizzeria and that he's the only person able Yo, why the children to look like that? The confidential clip shows how an employee was trapped in the bunny bun suit. And see, he got stuck in the back room. And the employee dying a horrible death. He got stuck, he was in the back room and he was having trouble with the suit. And like I said before, ain't nobody gonna go to the back room unless they really have to or the shift is over and they need to do like a tour around the building or some shit like that. So he had a spring lock failure in the back room. Nobody came in the back room, so he died slowly and very painfully. Can you see now? I was telling you guys the same thing. After enduring a long and slow, excruciating pain. The video then explains that the same thing happened to Michael's father, William, who died only for a short while but then he came back, back to life. Soon, Fnaf Puppet things. comes out of a present box, seemingly having Charlotte Emily's soul infused inside it. Another animatronic designed by Hendry, the partner of William Afton, who created the animatronics together. Puppet was created to protect Charlotte Emily, but fails to do so as Emily gets locked out, with William killing her, having a sickness inside of him. This causes Hendry to realize what he had done, helping a maniac having an urge to kill children, have access to animatronics intended <laughs> to entertain children, <laughs> which causes him to make a plan to stop it all for his deceased daughter, for the crying child, the employees that were trapped in spring locks, and all the children that died, preventing any further damage and death. Henry instructs Michael to use gasoline and set the place ablaze with all the animatronics and the possessed bunny bun, or commonly known as Springtrap, being present so that they can all perish as the only way to destroy the link between the trapped souls and the animatronics is to use fire. Okay. And indeed, Glitch Trap is possessed by no other than the angered soul of William Afton, the father of Michael. Michael, having the option to leave, yet feeling guilty about causing the death of his little brother, sets the place on fire, destroying the pizzeria, the atrocities committed inside it, setting all the trapped souls within the animatronics free, including himself, having his conscience finally cleared. He set everybody on fire. Created the training tape to indirectly pressure the, the mixtape on the wearing ground. the exoskeletons, which he knew too well would function the way they would calling it malfunctioning, killing the employees in this horrid way. People often say you can experience hell and justice, known as karma in real life, instead of waiting till death. Hence why William Michelle. suffers a similar fate, being hunted by the souls of the children he killed mercilessly, causing him to hide inside an animatronic suit. The suit, as intended, causes the springs to push inwards, leading to the same painful death he inflicted on others. Yeah, look at his that's what he gets anyways. In fact, Henry and William worked on a little experiment which could make the animatronics more lifelike. They created a machine called Scooper, which injected the mascots with an element called Remnant, which were derived from the souls of murdered people, specifically children. Why would Therefore, they do that? Therefore, the animatronics that wanted to kill Michael in his night shift thought that he's William Afton due to the close physical resemblance he shared with his father as they wanted to oh, see okay, vengeance okay. I see. what William did to them, All right. killing them and stuffing their corpses in the animatronics, whose souls were infused with them, trapping them for eternity. The only way to break the link and destroy the remnants so the souls would break free would be to apply heat, hence why setting so, the place on okay, fire yeah. with the animatronic his inside tape in the building. the souls free. The animatronic with fiberglass shell the guy that was singing in auto tune away seemed to look at the sketches as if remembering it was a child before but ultimately gives in to its monstrous nature chasing after the person hiding as being inside the suits for too long makes the souls forget who they were adopting their new monstrous natures the puppet animatronic infusing the soul of the murdered Charlotte Emily shows Michael about the atrocities his father had done, so that with one final act he can do right and redeem himself, and undo all the crimes and abominations committed. Okay, alright, so I, yeah, I have a feeling of what, um, uh, 
the non-existent uh, tapes are or the non-existent video is. It's basically like a reiteration or somewhat of a retelling of all the FNAF games. Alright, so I, I get the picture. Alright, um, <laughs> good stuff. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here. If you guys did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and all that other good stuff as that's gonna help me rank more and support me and get my channel up there, yes? I really do appreciate that. I did look back at my intro a little bit and I did make it sound as if my health was declining or something. That's a, that's not the case. I'm not dying, so... <laughs> I'm fine in that sense, so you guys don't need to... Don't worry about that. With all that being said, I will be seeing you guys shortly or sometime soon with a brand new video, yes?